Good evening, HBWC Nation. This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to be glad and rejoice in it. I want you to just take about 10 seconds and begin to give God praise, glory, and adoration for him bringing us through today danger seen and unseen. Let everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. I am honored tonight to stand in place of my pastor, Pastor Levi Rozier. I am Prophet Will Jones, a son of this house. And tonight I am excited. Why are you excited, Prophet? I am excited because God has given me a word just tailor-made for you to bring clarity in the midst of this pandemic. We know that right now the world seems like it's in chaos. We got shootings all across the cities of the United States. We're dealing with a global medical pandemic. People are losing their jobs and sometimes in the midst of chaos we can tend to lose our way we can tend to waver in our faith but I believe tonight that God is going to speak a word that will bring clarity and direction into your life into your community into your finances so I'm excited I'm still pumped from 6 a.m. prayer God met us in this house. God is doing amazing things at HBWC and for you on your behalf. So tonight, we want to dig into the word. And I want to talk from the topic, God, I need to hear you. In the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of what's going on in life, right now, we need to be able to hear God and hear God clearly. So tonight, I want to dive right in with this word on tonight. And I want to give you about five points tonight that will help you and say, God, how can I hear you clearly in this pandemic? God, when the when CNN and Fox News and people and mama and daddy and everywhere I go, I'm in the midst of a chaotic situation. How can I hear you? Are you speaking right now, God? If you are speaking, what are you saying to me personally, for my family, for my finances, for my community? We really need a word from the Lord. So tonight, I want to jump into our first scripture for tonight, and it's going to be coming from Matthew 4 and 4. And I'm excited about this because it brought clarity, it brought direction even unto myself as I was preparing. God was just saying, Will, I want my people to be able to know when it's my voice and another voice. And one of the things that we have seen lately, and especially in the last three to four months since we've been locked out of our churches, we've been doing church online, there are a lot of voices that are raising up. There are a lot of people that are speaking for God. And people are sometimes having a hard time discerning, is God, is that word for me? Is that prophet telling the truth? Is that apostle in your word? So tonight, we want to bring clarity. We want to bring clarity to your mind, to your heart, so that when you leave off this broadcast tonight, you will be able to hear the voice of God clearly and follow his leading. So in Matthew 4 and 4, we see Jesus is talking and it says, Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeded or that comes from the mouth of God. The first thought that I want to impart into you tonight is in order to hear the voice of God in this pandemic you must get in your word scripture speaks God's heart scripture speaks God's mind and I know that we can be distracted sometimes I know even with myself I found myself at home with my children with my wife and I kind of lacked off I started watching first 48 I'm addicted to crime dramas I'm addicted to documentaries about uh, crime and these type of things so I found myself giving a lot of time to TV I found myself not maximizing the moment our pastor, Pastor Levi, has told us he's been encouraging us to maximize this time with this pandemic. If you're home off of off your job, it's more time to pray. It's more time to dig deeper into that word. And so in Matthew 4 and 4, Jesus is telling them, look. I know, and I'm telling you all tonight, there may be reports on CNN, there may be reports on Fox News, the WHO is telling us that this pandemic may take five years, but the Spirit of God was telling me today, Will, dig into your word. What does my word say? What does my word say about your health? My word says that by his stripes you are already healed. His word says that even though everybody else may have lack, he is Jehovah Jireh. He shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and 
glory in Christ Jesus. So the first thing that we have to do during this pandemic in order to discern where God is moving, what God is saying, what God is not saying, is we have to line everything up with scripture. You cannot live by the reports that you hear on CNN. You can't live by what you read in the newspaper. As a believer, our authority comes from the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So in order to hear God first, you have to be full of his word. The Bible says that, um, the Bible says that uh, I hid his word in my heart. I hid his word in my heart that I may not sin against him. When you have God's word in your heart, no matter what the enemy throws your way, you can begin to say, listen, that's not what God's word says. God's word did not say that I was sick. God's word did not say that I have to accept being uh, sick on my deathbed or having diabetes or having coronavirus. God's word does not say I have a spirit of fear. His word says that he has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Somebody say, I got to read my word. I have to study my word. We are living in the end times and the things that are happening are not just something that pop up out the sky that God had no foreknowledge about. All throughout scripture, what we are seeing in the earth, the pandemics, the plagues, the hurricanes, the earthquake in diverse places, it's in his word. So we shouldn't come from a place and be shocked by what we're seeing. God has already written the manuscript on earth. He's already laid it out and told us this is going to happen. This is going to happen. In the end times, men are going to become lovers of themselves. And we are seeing those things. What we are seeing in the earth right now, even with this pandemic, is scripture is being fulfilled so we must we must we must in order to hear God's word now we must have clarity on what the scripture has said the second thing that he dealt with me about is stillness and worship now I know many of y'all see me sometimes on Facebook DJing and, and doing all these other things but at heart I am a worshiper and, and as I learned and began to walk in the prophetic I understood that it was the times of being still before God. What do you mean prophet by being still? 1 Samuel 3, 2 and 4. I want to paint a picture for you. We're going to talk about real quickly about uh, Samuel and when God began to call Samuel. When God began to call Samuel, it says in 1 Samuel 3, 2 through 4, one night Eli, whose eyes were becoming weak, that he so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. So Eli, at this point, he was lying down in a comfortable place. He was lying down in a place that he was familiar with. And sometimes we, as the body of Christ, sometimes we can just become familiar. We can come in, we can go through the routine of praise, and we can go through the routine of worship, and we can go through the routine of prayer. And I believe that even in this pandemic, God is shaking us from that place. It says in verse 3, the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord. Wow. So here it is. The priest Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here am I. So when I talk about being still, I was impressed that when God called Samuel, he was next to the ark. He was in a place of intimacy with God. He was in a place of the glory of God. And what I want to say, the thought that God gave me when I read this, he said, intervention comes through intimacy. I said, God, that's good. That's real good intervention we need God to intervene in this pandemic and it's only going to come through intimacy with him sometimes we have to shut off the tv we got to shut off netflix we got to shut off uh, uh, all this programming, all the radio, all the YouTube preachers that we listen to, all the churches that we listen to, how we hop from, from live broadcast to live broadcast. God wants us, in order to hear his voice, is to sit in stillness. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes you just have to disconnect from people. I know we love hugging and we love being around people and we love the fellowship. I know that since we've been out of church, I miss the gathering of the brothers and the sisters. But I believe that in order to hear God clearly right now, you have to shut everything down. You got to shut away from the children sometimes, shut away from your wife, your husband, your telephone, social media. Just shut everything down and get in a place of stillness. 
because one of the things that we need to do, and this is the thought that God gave me today, he said, well, some people need to turn down the volume of their life so that they can hear me clearly. Sometimes we are too busy. Uh, I got to make ends meet. I got to do this. I got to do that. And God is saying, Will, even in this pandemic, I need you to sit still. I need you to not be anxious about nothing, but with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto the Lord. So you got to slow down, remove the distractions, and be still. Also, in order to enter into that place of intimacy where God begins to intervene for your situation, you must create a culture and an atmosphere of worship. Listen, worship causes you to ascend to another realm, another dimension. And when you begin to worship, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So literally what you are doing when you begin to call him Yahweh, when you begin to say you are the king of kings, the Lord of lords, you are the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end you don't have to worry about coming out God begins to step down into your praise he begins to send the resources he begins to send the help he begins to send everything you need when you create that atmosphere of worship of worship we have to sit still sometimes quiet our soul quiet our minds and just say God here I am here I am to worship you here I am to adore you here I am to give you praise I'm not going to before I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise before I even tell you about what's going on with me before I cast my cares upon you I'm going to sit quietly be still my soul I'm going to command my soul to bless your name I'm going to commend my soul to worship and adore you even in this situation that I'm in I have to be still I can't, I can't talk to God and be doing something else. And some of us, we are guilty of that. We get up on Sunday mornings, and while, while our pastors or our apostles or prophets are preaching, we doing hair, we're braiding hair, we cooking, we yelling at the kids, we're doing all this stuff, and we miss the word that God has for us in the midst of the problem because we are too busy. God wants us to be still and enter into a place of intimacy with him, a deep place of worship with him. The third thing that we have to do in order to discern the voice of God in this hour is we have to desire to hear his voice. We have to desire to hear his voice. First Chronicles 16 and 11 reads, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always but I love what David David was a man after God's own heart and we often hear that David was a man after God's own heart but I said Holy Spirit well, what does that really mean it means that but outside of everything that David could have he wanted to possess the heart of God it wasn't that that he was just made in the image and the likeness of God or he was shaped in God's character and he literally was after the heart of God it drove him crazy it, it drove it drove him to prayer. It drove him to be the worshiper that he was because he could not live without God's presence. And in Psalm 27, 4, he says one thing. He could have asked for everything. He says one thing. Listen, Lord, I, I got some time with you, God. I don't know how y'all talk to God. I talk to God like, Lord, listen, this your boy. Listen, I got one request. You saying I can ask you for anything. You saying I'm going to be a king. You saying I can have the, the best of the land and all of that. But this one thing I desire of you, God, this only, this was his only focus. This only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Seek him, seek him, seek him. Three times tonight we've already heard seek. God is raising up a people. Hear me prophetically right now. He is raising up a people where they don't want just God's presence. They don't want just P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E -E they want his presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. That is what you're going to have to do in order to hear from God clearly. You have to desire to be with God. I remember when I came to Georgia about 11 years ago, I was broken. I had just went through a divorce. I was uh, drinking again in the clubs again. And I remember one night in a club. I will, I will never forget this experience. I was in a club DJing of all things. I was in a club DJing and the Holy Spirit told me this is the last night that you're going to do what you want to do. 
He said that as clear as I was drunk as I don't know what, out of my mind. And he says, this is the last night that you're going to do what you want to do. I went home and for three days I laid on the floor of my, of my bathroom. Could not, I was dealing with alcohol poisoning. My brother told me I should have died. For three days, all I could do was cry out to God and say, God, if you get this out of me, I will never do it again. If you cause me to be delivered tonight, I will never do it again. But I didn't know what I thought was a moment of deliverance was actually God setting up the seek and the hunger. The word says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Could it be we are not hearing from God? We are not seeing the outpouring of his spirit even in this pandemic because we have lost our seek? Have we, have we, have we gotten so comfortable? It says that, it says that, the lamp of God had not gone, had yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord. I wonder what would happen when the doors of the church opened if people came in not to hear a sermon, not to hear a worship song or a praise song, not to hear their favorite preacher, but just to get to the altar, get to the place where God, listen, empty me out. God put a hunger and a thirst and a desire in me where I'm never satisfied, where all I need is your presence. I don't need another a car I don't need a new wife I don't need a new husband I don't need a million dollars but God if you endow me with power if you endow me with the glory of God I have everything I need so David said I could ask for one thing and I'm only going to seek after one thing he desired to hear the voice of God. And many of us, because of whatever it may be, it could be life, it could be things that are happening mentally, emotionally, and physically, we have lost the desire to hear from God. I got a park right there because there are some pastors, there are some intercessors that are watching right now. There are some prophets that are watching right now and you have closed your mouth. You have lost your seek because life has hit you. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that tonight you get your second wind. He's going to cause a fire to reignite on the inside of you where you will be like Jeremiah said when I wanted to be quiet it was like fire shut up in my bones. I believe the spirit spirit of the Lord is getting ready to cause us to seek God like never before and we're calling for revival but I believe that the revival that's going to come is going to be on the altar the revival that is coming is going to be a prayer revival where we'll get back to shut-ins and locking in and saying God I won't let go of the horns of the altar until you bless my soul until I'm delivered until my community is set free God I have to have your presence Calm down, Will. Calm down. And I remember when I got up off that bathroom floor, and I don't know why I'm sharing this testimony, but somebody needs to hear it because your life is not over. Your ministry is not over. Your gift is not dead. The call of God on your life. You just had a pitfall, but God can raise you up and bring you from the pit to the palace. I'm a living testimony. When you desire to hear from God, he will speak. So I laid on that floor for three days, should have been dead, should have been in a hospital bed. And I remember when I got up, I began to spend hours in God's presence. I would, I would spend eight or nine hours locked in my apartment room. I'd cut off BET. I didn't want to do anything that would draw me out of the presence of God. I, I watched what I put in my ear gate. I watched what came out of my mouth. I watched what went into my eyes. And in the midst of the pain, I was like, God, I got to hear your voice. I wasn't worried about being unemployed. I wasn't worried about the divorce. I wasn't worried about being put out. I felt like, God, if I could just get one word from you uh, one word from the Lord will change everything uh, one I don't need a preacher I don't need an apostle I don't need a prophet I need a word uh, that has been sent from the throne room of heaven uh, that can be downloaded in my spirit so if it takes me 80 minutes or if it takes me 80 days uh, I'm gonna turn over my plate I'm gonna seek your face God David had a heart and he desired to hear God. So I laid on that floor and I remember it was days after days after days. I would have worship music going. I would be walking on the track and I have worship music going because I had to hear his voice. And the church of the living God across the nations has to get back 
where I don't want to hear your voice. Uh, I got to hear his voice. Uh, I don't need you right now. Uh, I need the angels to relay a message that will shift everything around me. Say, I got to hear his voice. <laughs> you sound real good, pastor, but I got to hear his voice. Uh, you prophesy real good, prophet, uh, but I got to hear his voice, his voice, his voice. So David says, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Come on, we got to desire his voice again. We got a desire to hear his voice. So I begin to I begin to just lay on that floor and I begin to just continue to seek God's face and read him uh, chapters at a time. And, and I had no idea in 2010 what God was going to do for me in 2019. But when what I was doing in 2010 was setting up my future. Hear me by the Holy Ghost. What you do in the midst of this pandemic is setting up the next six months of your life. Uh, what you are doing while you're at home laid off on your job uh, is setting you up for 2021 uh, can I tell you by the Holy Ghost that better days are coming God has wisdom and instruction he's not a God that just makes us jump and shout but he's a creative he's an all knowing all powerful revelatory God but you got a desire to hear his voice so I did not know in 2010 that I would be up preaching today I had, I had all I wanted was to hear his voice. All I desired was to feel his presence. All I desired was him to lay in his bosom, to bask in his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we do that, when we, when we create that intimacy where we desire to hear his voice, then God begins to speak. And what I learned about desiring to hear his voice in the midst of pain, he always releases the power. See, some of us want to, I don't know why I'm stuck here, but some of us want to hear God's voice, but we want to hear God's voice when everything is comfortable. We want to hear God's voice. We can hear God clearly when the bank account is full. We can hear God clearly when everything around us, but God is bringing a people up that says in the midst of the hurt, the distraction, the pain, and the pandemic, I can still tune into your voice, God. I can still still seek your face even though I'm laid off. Uh, I can still seek your face even though everything in my life is not right. Why? Because I don't desire your presence. I desire the presence. I desire to hear your voice. I desire to spend time with you. John 14 and 26. John 14 and 26. So we understand we have to establish scripture first in our lives. And once we establish the word of God in our hearts, we take that word and we let it permeate us into a place of worship. As we're worshiping, we, we, we're supposed to desire and seek after him, long after him. The fourth thing that is so important, John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. The fourth thing that you have to do to discern the voice of God is be full of the Holy Spirit. You got to get to the place that when you, when you start desiring God, the word says, if you draw nigh unto him, he would draw nigh unto you. So as you begin to seek God, as you begin to spend time in your word, as you begin to spend time in worship, it's almost like you have a, a, a heavenly rope tied around your waist. And every time you quote the scripture, every time you lift your hands in adoration, every time you fill your mouth with worship, the angels and the spirit of the living God the Holy Spirit in you begins to pull you closer he says I just heard you call me Jehovah Jireh and he pulls you closer I just heard you call me the Prince of Peace and he pulls you closer I just heard you call me the King of Kings the Lord of Lords the Lion of the tribe of Judah the great I am he pulls you closer to him and you can only do that through the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will reveal the mysteries of God. 
And that's one of the things that, that has tripped many of us up is because we watch the news and, and we're so intellectual now. We're, we're, we, we can quote the word. We can quote the message Bible. We can quote the, the, the English standard Bible. But can I tell you, there are some things that only the Holy Ghost can download into you. I remember when I was growing up, my mama said, she sat me down one day and she said, kid, let me tell you something. When you can't figure everything out, you need to steal your soul, steal your spirit and say holy spirit teach me everything we got to begin to pull on what god has left in the earth for us dr miles monroe he said in one of his books that the holy spirit is the most important person roaming the earth we keep looking to stimulus checks we keep looking to small business loans we keep looking to doctors and lawyers but can i tell you after the holy ghost has come upon you you shall receive power but not only do you receive power you receive the spirit of wisdom you are able to receive receive the wisdom of God the knowledge of God I want you right now HBWC nation to say Holy Spirit sit on me sit on my heart sit on my mind sit on my prayer life sit on my children sit on my finances what I don't know Holy Spirit give it to me now the word of God tells us he that seeketh wisdom let him ask of God who gives it liberally and how does he give it he gives it through his word how does he give it? He gives it through worship. How does he give it? He gives it when we seek, when we knock, and when we ask. Come on tonight. I want you to take some time tonight and say, Holy Spirit, I open myself up to everything that you possess. Everything that God sent you to the earth to release. Every word that has been spoken in eternity over my life, over my children. I feel the Holy Ghost. Over my family, over my finances. Holy Spirit. Spirit, I give you permission to infiltrate every area of my life. Sit on me tonight, Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. Uh, we need the oil of the Lord to wreck us. Uh, I'm talking about getting so caught up in the spirit uh, like they used to do when you had to get carried to your car. You didn't know how you got home. All you know is this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel uh, that in the last days I'm going to pull out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters uh, shall prophesy your young men shall dream dreams and, and your old men shall have visions. Uh, I want it like that. I want it like the day of Pentecost uh, when they were in the upper room on way of one accord uh, and the Holy Spirit began to whoa. The wind began to blow uh, and the Holy Spirit set upon them like fire. Say Holy Spirit sit on me. Shut up Shire. Holy Spirit, sit on us. <laughs> sit on us until we conform to the image of Christ. <laughs> sit on us till we talk like you, till we walk like you. <laughs> sit on us until we have dominion and authority that you have given us. <laughs> sit on us, oh God. Tonight, sit on us. Sit on us. Sit on us. Sit on us, God. Sit on us. Hanabosikalabandiosataya. <laughs> Last point. Get that scripture in your heart. Point number two, have some stillness and some worship. And as you worship, desire to hear his voice, desire to seek his face, desire and long and hunger and thirst after him and watch the Holy Spirit intervene. Remember, intervention comes through intimacy. Last point, and I'm going to let you go tonight. I hope this word is blessing you. My spirit is happy. My spirit is charged. I'm trying to calm down. Last thing is prayer. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you get into a realm of prayer. I'm not talking about this knick-knack paddywhack, give me a dog a bone type of prayer. I'm talking about the type of prayer where Jesus prayed until his sweat turned to blood. I'm talking about the type of prayer that makes you cry and moan where you don't know what to pray and the Holy Spirit begins to make intercession through you with moaning and groaning. I'm talking about the type of prayer where you can 
keep caught up and you go from glory to glory to glory where you've been in the presence of God for two or three hours and it feels like five minutes. I'm talking about the type of prayer where God begins to change your language where you were praying in tongues and you begin to intercede for Africa. You begin to intercede against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm talking about the type of prayer that is birthing out Jeremiah God begins to talk to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33 and 3 and he tells the prophet Jeremiah I need you to do something Jeremiah I don't need you to just come in and give me five minutes I need you to call to me and then I will answer you okay I know y'all don't like that but he says begin to call to me we want to get into the place of prayer sometimes where we have become lazy we have become lethargic we want to call our prayer warriors we want to wait till we get to church but I decree and declare tonight that the spirit of intercession is getting ready to wreck your nights you won't be able to sleep the Holy Spirit is going to rock you and shake you and you're going to begin to get up and lay on the horns of the altar lay on your face and say God here am I he's looking for men and women uh, to stand in the gap so tonight we say here am I he says Jeremiah I don't need you to prophesy I don't need you to have a praise break. I don't need you to sow a sacrificial offering. What I need you to do, Jeremiah, I need you to grab your press shawl. I need you to grab your communion, your grape juice. I need you to go in your prayer closet, shut the door, and I need you to call out to me. See, we've been waiting to get back into the church, but the spirit of the living God is waiting for us right in that living room. Build me an altar right in that bathroom build me an altar right in that garage build me an altar while you washing pots and pans build me an altar he declared to Jeremiah call to me and then I will answer you not only Jeremiah will I answer you but I will tell you I got something to tell you Jeremiah see I don't want to monologue in prayer with you Jeremiah I want to dialogue with you can I help the church in HBWC nation the problem that we have in prayer is we come and we cast our cares before Jesus but we don't give God enough time to respond we come and tell God all of our troubles situations and circumstances circumstances but we don't stay and allow God to speak back to us we call unto God he says I'm going to answer you but we don't stay for the answer so he specifically tells Jeremiah first thing Jeremiah when you get in prayer I want you to call to me I will answer you I promise that my word shall not return void Jeremiah but after you pray and I answer you I need you to stay put so that I can tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Your answer is in prayer. But you got to stay long enough for God to answer you. God just don't want to tell you I'm going to bring you out. He wants to tell you I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to give you the strategy. I don't want to just bring you out. I want to bring you out and give you a strategy that you can pass on to the next generation. And the next generation can pass it on to the next generation. And the generations after that, I want to tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Last scripture, Jeremiah 29, 12 through 14. He tells Jeremiah up earlier in the text, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. First, I want you to call my name so you can get my attention. Then I want you to pray and I will listen to you. Here is the key, HBWC Nation. And I'm done. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Remember when I talked about the stillness, getting in the stillness of God. One of the problems that we have as the body of Christ, as the church, is we don't have time for prayer. He says, you will seek me and then find me. I have no problem with you seeking me, Jeremiah. I'm going to allow you to find me. But it's only going to be when you seek me with all your heart. 
I got to I got to be intentional about my time with God now. Intentional, I hear Holy Ghost. Intentional intimacy provides divine intervention. Five things that will cause us to, to the, 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 the ears of your understanding to open, the scales to fall from your eyes is when you get in God's word, when you create an atmosphere of worship and stillness before the Lord, when you desire hunger, thirst, long to hear his voice, the Holy Spirit will begin to overshadow you, take you to realms and dimensions that you can't imagine in God. And once you get into that place, there's a place in prayer where the unsearchable things, the mysteries of God begin to unfold. The cracks and crevices of your life begin to be filled with his presence, his power, his resources. So I want to encourage you tonight to be intentional about reading your word. Be intentional about worship be intentional about seeking God's face. Be intentional about spending time with God. And be intentional in this hour with your prayer life. Because in verse 14, if we do all of that, he tells Jeremiah, I promise you this, Jeremiah. I will be found by you. If you seek me, you long after me, you read my word, I promise you will find me. Not only will you find me, but I will bring you from captivity. Holy Spirit. I will bring you out prospering and producing in a pandemic. I will gather all the broken pieces. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. What I want to prophesy over HBWC Nation and the nations of the earth, hear me in the Holy Ghost. The agenda of the enemy behind this pandemic will not succeed. God is going to cause you to produce and prosper even in this pandemic. Put these five things into practice. Be intentional about your intimacy and your spending time with God. And I promise you, you will hear God in a way that you've never heard God before. I promise you. I promise you, God wants to speak to us tonight. Amen. I hope this word has blessed you. I am excited about what God is doing in the lives of his people in the body of Christ. And I want to give you an opportunity tonight to sow seed into the work of God. God is doing some amazing, miraculous things here at HBWC and for HBWC Nation. And we want to give you a time to be a part of that. Your money is being effectively to push, is being used effectively to push the gospel of the kingdom of God. Not just in our local communities, but all across the world. We are reaching nations with the the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I want to give you an opportunity. Let God lead and guide you and sow into the work of God. Sow into the kingdom of God tonight. You can do text to give. You can do cash app. You can, if, you, if you feel there tonight to sow, we want to give you the opportunity to sow tonight. And we thank you on behalf of Pastor Levi Rosier, Lady Felicia Rosier, and the entire HBWC Nation, we are praying for you. We are standing in the gap with you. And I want to declare that better days are ahead for you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word tonight. God, we ask that as they sow into the kingdom of God, you will give them not 30, not 60, but a 100 fold return. We are asking tonight, God, all across the land that you do exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask or think. Blow their mind, God. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders being released across this nation on tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. And it's in Jesus' name name we pray tonight amen hbwc nation you'll be blessed and we will see you sunday morning